Right, today we're going to look at this WaveTech 178 function generator. Now this, I'm not quite sure what the condition actually is. This was obtained locally. The fuse has been pulled and noted that, hey, it's got a fault. I don't know if it's capacitors or whether there's something else going on. No idea. We're going to pull it apart first, going to take the cover off, have a look inside, see if we see anything that looks dodgy. If it all looks physically okay, we'll reinstall the fuse and try powering it up and see what we can see and check voltages and things like that. This may be a simple repair, it may be a nightmare, I don't know. We'll see what we find. Let's get these screws out. I'll have a quick look at this and I'll let you know if I find anything. First impression is it looks pretty clean in here. Even the fan looks pretty clean, it looks actually quite nice. So I've had a look around this side of the board and it looks really nice. There is one screw I can see it's missing from here, which is interesting. In the external phase lock section here, there's a, right there is a screw missing. I've checked through all the other screws and they all seem tight and like there's nothing looser in it I can see, so I don't know what the story is there. One of the things that really catches my eye is that this board is actually labelled up really nicely. So like for example here you've got low frequency mixer, 50 volt power supply, plus 5 volt power supply, minus 15 volt power supply, isolated power supply, output attenuator, um, triangle converter, high frequency sine wave, AM circuit AM in, sync out, sync and square wave shaper, output here, power amp, <laughs> option 02, external phase lock, 10 MHz reference oscillator, 100 MHz reference out. It's all beautifully labelled. This is really nice. Now looking at the front panel here, the back of this, which you can't see right now, there's a empty IC socket here, which is U19. I might have to look into that and see what that's about. That could be an option for it or something like that. Or maybe it's a programming thing. I, I, who knows? There's an empty socket there which is worth investigating. And next to it in U20 appears to be an EEPROM. Because it's got a label on the top of it. It looks like an EEPROM. Yeah, there's a few things going on there which I might need to look. If it's got an EEPROM, I need to pull that out and probably check that. If I do find any like, static RAM, like the Dallas RAM in here, which could be in here. I haven't seen it yet. But if there is some in here, that will probably need pulling and backing up. So there's a copy of this calibration or whatever it may be. But so far so good. Let's pull the bottom cover off. A little bit of dust in the bottom panel itself, but not too bad. And this is much like the top side. It's got this really nice labelling on there. Square amplifier, 1 MHz delay, trigger control lock, reset and serial interface, control circuitry, more EEPROMs here. No sign of any Dallas RAM, which is great. So that's a relief actually. Got some controls over here, phase delay, current, programmable counters, screw wave output. Yeah, so I love the way this thing's all labelled up. It's really nice. It's really beautifully done. Flexors came up to the front look good. Just there is where the NTIC socket is. That says program memory in that section there. So it could be an option thing. So power switch goes right through to here. There's a power switch right there at the back. So there's a shaft that runs right through. Physically, it's looking okay. There's one massive cap sitting right here. No bulging present. There's a few caps on this board here, not many. No obvious signs of any leaks or anything like that. So there's actually not many caps on this board. There's a couple of tantrums around. So there's a few dip temps. There's a dead bug I see over here. <laughs> That's an interesting one. So just here is an IC, which is dead bugged. It's attached to the PCB upside down. And it's got those little wire links going to places around here. Obviously it's a factory modification. I just find it really interesting. Well, I don't see that very often, that kind of thing. But yeah, otherwise, this thing's actually looking really good. I'm looking around, trying to find date codes, and all I'm seeing is 1989 everywhere, and over here it says lot number just there, and it says 8952, which means I think that's 52nd week of 1989. So it's like the end of 89 this thing was made. That's what it looks like. So this thing's 33 years old, basically. I haven't seen any bulging caps, and this, this one here would be fun to replace. <laughs> it's a big, big mother, that one. Anyway. <laughs> I think we'd probably safe to power this thing up because these are the main power rails and these are the big main bolt caps for that the fact that these aren't actually down on the board they've actually got a bit of wobble on them that does make me think a little bit that there could be some extrusion going on but then they're all like that so you know, all of them are slightly off the board so it could just be the way they manufactured it they're actually not actually putting them right down to the board so I haven't seen a single thing which looks like it's got a problem at least not yet nothing obvious so I'm actually happy to power this up and try it out so let's do that turn the power on we'll see what comes up on the hoppy meter over here 
and we'll see what happens first and um, if there's any main problems with the power supply. I, mean, I don't know if it's actually got a standby power. It may be powered partially because it does have reference and stuff over here, but it doesn't have it like an ovenized oscillator. But that option there could be the ovenized oscillator. So it may actually be that it has an option to do that and it will have power going to the power supplies already. No power draw at all right now, so okay, that's fine. It's not using any power in standby. Next thing is to push this button and see if we get any magic smoke. Now, I think it's noticed over here on the main pool there. So, 8909 here, it's probably the ninth week of 89, which is when this board was designed. And this top board here says lot 8949. So, three weeks before the other board I saw. So, I reckon that's right, and that is actually going to be this manufacture time. I'm just looking if I can see any roofers. <laughs> All the transformer stuff's right in the very back here. So the transformer right there. So the IEC connector here goes straight into the transformer there, and then it comes out and comes to this board right here. Right, so this transformer windings here, and we've got the, also comes over to here. I think there's a yeah bridge rectifier right there, which comes to this big cap, which then comes to over here. There's markings on the board here for where the socket for the voltages come to the transformer. So they've got that detail. So it might require a bit more research on this to find out where all the test points are. I'll have to look at the manual. I haven't read the manual at all. Done no research on it. As far as I know, I've got blown tents. I've got no idea. Anyway, we'll find out. Just try it. Fans going. It's drawing 170 watts, 0.8 amps. And is that no display? Let me try that again. There is nothing coming up on the display at all. Right, so it's drawing 0.8 amps and it's got a 1 amp fuse, so it's below its maximum rating. It's probably okay, but I think we need to check voltages, so I need to go away and find where the test points are for voltages. As the display is dead, I'm pretty sure it's something to do with that. There could even be a shorter component somewhere which is loading it down. 5 volt rail, most likely, and 5 volt supply is right here. With that missing chip, does that mean that it won't work because that chip is actually for display memory? I'm going to go and find it out. Should it be there? So I was wrong, this connector here isn't from the transformer, it looked like it was. It snakes around to the other side of the board. And these labels on this board here are the actual test points. So I can actually measure the voltages in this plug. Now what I just noticed though, this plug wasn't pushed right down. So I just gave it a push. Let's try it again. Wasn't that. <laughs> that would have been easy. Oh well, moving on. Alright, let's test this power rail, see what we're getting. I've set it to DC and AC so we can see both. So if there's any riffle on the lines, we'll be able to see that as well. So let's shove this in here. That should be the ground point, and this one should be plus 44 volts. Then we'll get into connection, I don't know. I'm not seeing anything there. See nothing there. Okay, next one it should be plus 5 volts. Nothing there. Next one, nothing. This is interesting. These should be 5 volts. Are these things actually not making connection? Maybe. I'm being careful when I touch these heat sinks in case they're live or something. I'm seeing nothing here. There you go. So I can see metal here. Oh, look at that one. Yeah, so we've got a isolated 15 volts. Right? So we've got plus 15 volts there. And then here should be minus 15 volts. Try it this way. That's not there. That's this collapse. So that's not there. Minus 15 volts is not there. Let's try these ones. 1.5 volts. This is not happy. 1.5 volts. 0.5 volts. Yeah, this is not in a happy place. This one here. 2 volts. Well, there's some problems here, isn't there? What's going on here? I'm just going to measure the upper from this big capacitor down here because it comes to these two big taps. I'm just going to measure there. Six volts DC with a quite large amount of ripple. Well, that's interesting. I verified by measuring around this circuit here that the minus 15 is definitely missing. I measured across the op amps, which I know have got a minus 15 volt rail going to them. So I checked the circuit diagram, and there's no minus 15 volt. 
So without these rails looking properly, obviously other stuff's not going to be good. So this is a plug which goes off to another board somewhere. So if I unplug this, let's power it up again, retest the rails on those connectors directly. We'll see what happens. I did also unplug and reseat this connector. I don't know if that's changed anything. Maybe it has, because that actually does come from the transformer. So there's two big chunky wires going from that cap to this transformer here, well, from the transformer, to the board there, which plug in directly. And then you've got this connector here, which also plugs in directly. And that is from the transformer, and this is the output. So that's the input, that's the output. So let's measure these again. Now I've unplugged that connector, and see if anything's changed. So it's just pin there. 15 volts, minus 15 volt is there, plus 15, yep that's still there, we've got 5 here, yep there's 5, so those are working now, now there's another earth here, might not be the same ones, that's a note, let's try the next one over, there we go, so that's firstly 5 volts getting 7.7 .7 there which is interesting, and this one here, supposed to be 44, getting 47. So we've got voltages on that socket now. So was it me reseating this which changed something? Or is it that me unplugging this has changed something? Let's plug that back in again. We'll turn it back on. Still no display, so it's probably dead. Check the minus 15 again. Nothing. Okay, so there's something that this plug is going to here, which has got a problem. I need to trace that out and find out where that goes. So I've narrowed it down quite a bit. The power supply does seem to be working. It's really got 7.7 .7 volts instead of 5 volts though, but maybe it's an unregulated supply? Maybe? Possibly. I'll have to have a look. So I was looking around see if I see any obvious failures. This is where the power comes into this side of the board here. So something on this board is bad. Or maybe something this board connects to is bad. It's possible. There's also a ribbon here, which I could probably take off and check that too. Um, that is in the right place, isn't it? Sometimes things get unplugged and plugged back in wrong. That looks okay. What I have noticed though is right here, there's a little wire lead which has popped out. I should put that back in. Now it probably means someone's had this thing apart. There you go. It probably is a result of someone pulling it apart and having a look. But I've had a look around already. I'm going to keep looking to see if I can see any chips with holes in it or anything like that because something is shorting out. It could be a bad electrolytic. I mean, they can short if they go bad. There are tantalums on this board. So I'm looking for any burnt tents. I haven't seen anything yet, obviously. I was, I'll show you. But somewhere, there was something which isn't happy. Now what I actually might do is unplug the display board, because that plugs into this flex here. We've got this flex here, which disappears off the other side. I unplug both of those, and we'll recheck it again. Actually, this isn't even plugged in properly. That's not even, that's not even half down. It's not even plugged fully in. Yeah, someone's had this apart. But that doesn't surprise me. I, I mean, I did get this knowing this is a 40 unit, so... Someone's probably already been looking at this thing and trying to figure out what's going on. Again, it's got the same markings here telling what the voltages are. So that's good. So I'm going to plug the other side back in again, unplug these ribbons, and we'll remeasure from this side and see if anything changes. All right, turn the power on. Let's see if, if anything's changed. Hey, we've got 47 volts there now. This one here, 7 volts, 7.3. It's dropped slightly, which is good. Still pretty sure it's wrong though. I think it should be 5. Not that one. Let's try this ground. Now the 5 volt rail is still down. Yeah, okay, so I've got that rail's down. There's still stuff missing. So there's definitely shorts on this board somewhere. Time to go hunting. So let's check some tantalums. There's one here. That's okay. There's one over here. That's okay. There's one here. That's okay. There's a big one here. That's okay. There's one next to it, just here. Ah, that is not okay. There's a short by that tantalum. Either that tantalum itself or something that's on the same rail as that one. And are there any more? That's sort of ones that are visible. I might take the shields off and check underneath the shields, see what's under there. There could be some more. But we found one which is suspicious, so we need to check that one out. And that is, I'm not sure, it might be C92 maybe. There's a marking there. I'm not sure if that's the right one though. So I pulled this shield cover off this one. Uh, there's a tantalum just down there, that checks okay. This is the one which I found a short one, this one just here. And this blue one here is also measuring as a short. Now they could be on the same rail, 
I can check for that. Let's actually have a look now, see if they are on the same rail or not. See if we get a connection between them. That's definitely a connection there. That's definitely a direct connection there. So those two tents are on the same rail. So one of those two tents or something on that rail, those two tents share, is bad. Got to check under this other shield yet. And underneath this shield, we've got a whole bunch more tents. So I need to check all of these as well. There's quite a few in here. There's a short there. That one's okay. There's a definite short on that one. Or at least on that rail. That one's okay. That's okay. That one appears okay. There's going to be some residual power in some places, so it might be causing problems with readings. That's okay. Swapping the things around helps. If it's not measuring a dead short, then it should be fine anyway, basically. It's fine. That'll be fine. Well, this big one is here. Which is also fine. Nothing in that one, nothing in that one. So we've got a tantalum right here. That one, that one, and this one are measuring a short. This board screws in, so I can actually unplug this board. This is daughter, but it could even be stuff underneath it. And we'll take that board out and we'll have a look at that one, see if it's, that short goes away or not. Because it could be the issues on this board and it's shorting out the rest of the circuitry. Actually, before I do that, let me check. See, this is connected to these other rails. Ish. That's definitely connected there. Yeah, so that's on the same rails as the other two. So one of these three tantalums or something they're on, at least they share the same rail, is bad. Getting there. Alright, so I pulled this board out, rechecked that tantalum. That is not shorted anymore. So this just happens to be on the same rail. We can put that back in again. And that means we're narrowed it down quite a bit. It's probably one of those two tantalums. Unless there's another one hiding somewhere. So the tantalum over here, which has got a short one, I think it looks like C170. So we need to find out what rail that's on and we can go from there. So I'm going to try narrowing down which likelihood it is of these two tantalums up here which are being a problem, right? In diode mode they're both giving exactly the same reading of a very low value. I've gone to resistance mode, I'm going to see if I can see a difference between these two tantalum capacitors in resistance mode. And this doesn't have high resolution at these really low levels, but it might be enough. Let's have a look. So get into that 1.62, 1.64 there, 1.62 we get on that one. Come over this one. Same polarity because that might matter. Shut it on. 1.65. This is reseat those probes, make sure. There we go. Yeah, 1.65, 1.67. It looks like. Yep, and again there. It's going to repeat this, each one. 1.66, I'm going to repeat this one. The short appears to be closer to this tantalum than that one. It's further away from here, so this one's closer to the short. Interesting. There can be 12 from over here where the short is too. Let's have a look which rails it could be on. I'm not sure which pair it's supposed to be using. 1.72. So this is the 15 volt rail. That's 1.7 at the power connector. That means the short is closer to this tantalum than it is to the power connector. So it's actually quite likely it's that tantalum. I need to look at the circuit diagrams first. So I'll just power this up just now using a thermal camera to check it. I've looked around the rails, the only thing I can really find is that capacitor there and this one here are the main ones which are on that rail. And this one here I'm really suspicious about. But let's just power it up again and look at the thermal camera. So you can see we've got some hot spots right here. These are two DACs. This is U100 and U101. That's rather concerning. But you also look, can you see that little dot just here? That's that tantalum. So that's C93 and that's showing up and it shouldn't really be showing up. We've also got another hot spot over here which is that chip there. I mean, sometimes chips do get warm. I'm a little bit worried about these DACs though because they're getting pretty hot. You now 60 degrees. Oh, before I was actually seeing like utter 80 degrees on those DACs and that doesn't seem quite right. Yeah, see them there. The only thing that really shows up on parallels is those decks and that tantalum there which is lighting up like a little dot. That little beastie right there is probably the problem. Well, let's take that out and try it again. 
Right, so I've desoldered one leg of that tantalum and lifted that one leg out. Let's see what we get. Let's stick the probes on the board and see if anything's changed. Hey, look at that. That's looking normal. Check on the tantalum. Here we go. Yep, that tantalum shorted. Found it. There you go. Desoldered the part. And that's a 22 microfarad 35 volt part. Looks like 35 volt. It's really bad printing. Being 35 volt, I would have thought that should be okay. So it's a 15 volt rail. Should have been okay for that. I've seen 25 volt used, but it looks like 35, which should have been okay. But anyway, let's swap that out. So I've replaced that tantalum. Let's see if it will power up this time. I've plugged the connectors back in again. Do we get a display? We do. And it beeped. And it looks like it's started up now. Excellent. I'm going to check the power rails before I go too far with this in case there's more than one fault. Let's power this up again and measure the rails. And try and figure out which rail is supposed to be measuring. I'm not sure which junctions go to which ones. There's the 44, look at that, perfect 44 exactly. 4.89, slightly down but okay. Exactly 5, look, 5.1, these should all be the same. They're looking good. Minus 15, yep, yeah, that's looking good. Plus 15, looking good. Rails look good. Actually, I should check the AC aspects of those, shouldn't I? Let's do the AC. Look at those again with AC going. Yeah, that's looking alright. A little bit of AC ripple on that one. 61 millivolts or so AC. That one's looking good. That's good. And that's good. So the 5 volt rail here, if I get to the correct ground, that's the isolated 5 volt rail. That's got a little bit of ripple on that, so that might require some more investigation. It might be a bad capacitor in that section, but it looks like it's actually basically working now. So you're not missing these, eh? It's always a capacitor. It's always a capacitor. And that's actually time to see if it actually outputs anything. I put the covers back on, just got a couple of screws in each panel just to hold it on. Of course, it does rely on airflow across the heat sinks and stuff like that. In order to make sure the air flows are correct coming through the sides and going across the heat sinks like it's supposed to be, these covers needed to be on. I'm ready to try this out. I've got it hooked up already to my scope here, which is set up to 5 volts of division, 1 times, and we'll see what comes out of this. Hopefully it does actually work, and this will be the moment of truth. I haven't even looked at the display pop myself yet. I just decided to power it up the first time, so... Pick it on. Self-test, WaveTech model 178, it showed up. We have something happening over there. Frequency, yes, waiting for me. Okay, one kilohertz. Enter, I guess. Amplitude, one volt peak to peak, yes. So if you change the frequency to something else, let's do, yes, right, okay. Frequency, let's do 10 megahertz. Well, double, double. Hmm, 1000 then, okay. How do I use this thing? <laughs> ah. I've got to figure this out now. So it does at least appear to be functioning, so I've, I've figured out how to use it a little bit. I've got cursors here, which is actually the easiest way of changing things, I think. There's obviously a way of doing it with the keyboard. I haven't figured that bit out yet. So I've also added a 50 ohm terminator here, just to the output here, just to balance it, because this is expecting a 50 ohm load. My scope is not set up 50 ohm. I don't, while I'm using that input, I'll just put a 50 ohm terminator here. So I've got 5 volt peak to peak set on here, and we're getting 4.2, so it's actually quite a long way up. Frequency is perfect though. Set to 1 megahertz and it's got exactly 1 megahertz on the scope so that's actually looking really good. And go over here. Let's go 11 megahertz. It's got exactly 11 megahertz. 31. And interestingly at 31 megahertz the amplitude has increased greatly. So now it says it's 10.8 volts peak to peak. This goes up 50 megahertz max. That's 49 megahertz. And that's dipping down again. It's now 5.2. So it looks like the output isn't actually very linear. And that's doing 5.2 peak to peak, which is kind of what it should be doing, but that's weird. That's I'm bringing this down. I'll, look, I'll show you the scope and we'll see what we're doing. You see what I mean? So we've got it set to 46 megahertz right now, and that's basically what it's doing, almost bang on. But look at the amplitude there. That's 6 volts peak to peak right now. 
Right, so there's 10 volts peak to peak there, 32 megahertz. And that's coming down again. So 40 megahertz is 5 volts almost. There we go, 5 volts peak to peak is 13 megahertz. That's perfect, there. Yeah. Could be reflections in the cable causing problems. I will move that out in a second. But his last frequency is looking perfect. That's 1 kilohertz there. Let's check it down with the spot some more. Yeah, that's looking fine down there. I'll put a terminator around the end of the cable, which is where it should be. I was being a bit lazy. And we'll see if maybe it's reflections in the cable causing that problem. So I've moved the terminator and back at 1 megahertz again. We're getting 4.4 volts again. So it's wind the frequency up. 2 megahertz. Fourteen. That's twenty megahertz. It's coming up again. So that's five volts again there, it's thirty-seven megahertz. There we go, fifty megahertz now, and yeah, that's much flatter. It's still not perfect, it is dipping down a bit, so I think it was that terminator. There must have been some reflections in the cable causing those misreadings. It is working okay there. Brilliant. Let's see if we can find a different waveform. Right, so I think I figured out how to change this. So I've changed this to 1 volt peak to peak just to reduce loading on the 50 amp load. So, function. You've got sine wave right now. Next one is triangle wave. I've got it set to 500 kilohertz. That's triangle wave apparently. <laughs> this is square wave. Next one it says frequency error. So maybe I think it's still too high. I have to drop it down already to get down to here. Still there. I mean, it's complaining about frequency errors, but it is doing it. <laughs> there you go, now stop complaining about it. So, 20 kilohertz is the maximum for this particular waveform, which is marked as being ramp. DC offset, AM sine, I guess that means you can modulate it. Yes, this isn't the easiest thing to bloody use, I have to say. Triangle wave, square wave. I mean, it is working. So that's 1 volt peak to peak, what it's set to, and it's doing 1 volt. It's actually numbered, you see. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, there's only 5. DC offsets. Let's put an offset in this. Yep, DC offset's working. That's 4 mV offset. That appears to be correct. Yeah, so it's got lots of features on it, but I don't know how to use it all. <laughs> but it is at least working now. It's always a capacitor. So you go, this one little tantalum capacitor took down this piece of equipment. Evil tantalum. But usually tantalums aren't such a big deal. I mean they do go from time to time, usually when they get older, and usually when they've had issues with ripple. It's usually when they've got high ripple power supplies when tantalums will fail. I've had tantalums before on other things which have gone, but it's not actually that common, it's usually electrolytics that go. Anyway, I think I'm going to call this thing fixed. I'm going to play with some more, make sure that it does seem function properly. But I think it is actually pretty good. I need to figure out how to use it. And I think I'm going to sell this thing. I don't actually have a use for it. I don't actually need this thing because up here I have a signal generator which can actually do more than this thing can. So this would be good for someone. No, I'll sell this cheap and someone will get some use out of it, I'm sure, once I figure out how to use it anyway. So check out my other videos down below. Subscribe over here if you're not really subscribed. And there's Patreon support link over there if you want to help me to buy a bit of test gear to fix a bit like this which I can do videos about. Catch you later.